get all right, Andrew. Let's move on to our third and final uh, topic today. Uh, Morbius. I'm going to go see Mar Morbius on March 31st. I'm going to go see it the day before it comes out. I'm going to see it in the afternoon. I'm going to do an out of theater reaction. I don't know if I want to see it, but I'm going to see it. I'm hoping for a good time, but this doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> I look. This movie was supposed to come out like uh, right around the pandemic. It got delayed because of the pandemic. It should have come out in January. I think if it came out in January and it flopped, people would have been like, eh, pandemic. But now it's like, uh, I don't know, Batman just did so well. Spider-Man, like, it's kind of strange. But I do want to bring this up. So uh, the rumor is right now, well, the word on the street is now is people are seeing this movie and they are hating, critics are not liking this movie. I don't even know if there's an embargo. And if there is, it probably won't lift until like a week after the movie comes out. They're not happy with this movie at all. People aren't liking it. I saw some people online saying they've seen it and it's a mess. But some people are gonna like it. They said they're like some people are gonna like this, but it's a giant mess. It just they does it. The biggest problem is it doesn't know what universe it's in or what villains it allows itself to use in that universe. So it kind of just lives in like some weird thing. But someone did tweet this out, and I I didn't save the tweet. Um, but Venom has a tomato meter, which you know I hate Ron Tomatoes, but a tomato meter score of thirty percent. All right, a Ron Tomatoes has thirty percent approval rating from three hundred sixty one critics. But the audience approval of Venom, 81%. That's 51% more people like, like it. And that's from 25,000 plus. Few. That's a lot of people going on there being like, hey, we enjoyed this movie. And obviously they did because they made a sequel to it. I don't have the numbers for the sequel in front of me. But let's just go with Venom and this. Morbius, maybe this is another case where critics don't like it because it's not made for them. Uh, but audiences are going in, just like Uncharted. They're going in and being like, no, this is a better time than I thought. Do you think that could be the case with Morbius? Oh, boy. Uh, James, I think you said the perfect thing that sums up this motion picture, which is, I don't know if I want to see it, but I'm going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like that... it's been like a carrot. If it would have come out the first time, I probably would have passed. But now I'm like, well, now I kind of got to see it. <laughs> that is that they might as well use that in the marketing because <laughs> I I can't think of a better sentence that sums up Morbius as a film. Because like, here's the thing: I feel the exact same way. Um, me and my group of friends, uh, like Tiago, uh, like Harmon, Chris, all you've met those guys. They are all we are all super Spider-Man nerds. We all grew up on that Spider-Man cartoon. Yeah. We are we are excited anytime the, anything spider-man happens the 90s spider-man cartoon. the 90s spider-man cartoon yeah not the super Friends which had whatever. which had which had which had morbius in it yeah that was my introduction to morbius in fact yeah. um so anytime anything spider-man related comes out uh like obviously no way home the first venom movie the second venom movie we were like yes all right let's go guys come on let's make plans let's get tickets let's go and that conversation is starting to happen on whatsapp of like, hey, Morbius has a release date. Who's going to get tickets? Whatever. But there's a difference in the conversation this time. And you can <laughs> feel it. You can feel the lack of electricity in the air, James. And it is that difference. It is that shared, unspoken feeling between the six of us guys where we're all thinking the same thing. We're all thinking, we don't really want to watch this movie, but we're all going to watch this movie. And I, I think it comes down to a little bit of what I said before regarding how Iron Man and Blue Beetle, like what you brought up to about the, their, their villains, you know, nobody cares. And it's, it's the same kind of situation here, but I feel like even more so. Every person I know who is talking about watching Morbius is always talking about the same thing, is always talking about, I'm really curious to see what universe this is set in. Nobody I have ever talked to in the last four years or whatever that this movie was supposed to exist has said, I can't wait to go see the story of Michael Morbius. How how bad is that? Like it should we care what universe? This is the problem. Like, why should we even care what universe? Like, because Venom, to that point, no one went to Venom being like, what universe is Venom in? No, we just want, went and watched Venom. But yeah, Morbius is, uh, it's this completely different beast. I feel like this movie looks like it came out at like around the Blade time. Like it was a, yes. like it was a, I love Blade and Blade too, but this looks like, you know, 
it came out at that time and it didn't quite nail it like spawn like it was kind of like you're like what just happened what i guess i saw it because it's a comic movie but that you know and it looks it feels like it has that sensibility about it and i don't know how i feel but also craven the hunter just got in, started shooting now that are you excited for that do you think your friends will have a different attitude towards that i think i don't know if they'll have a different attitude i mean i'm more excited for craven by like an inch only because i like Craven and Chameleon more as Spider-Man characters than I like Morbius. I always thought Morbius was just kind of a lame villain in that cartoon anyway. Um, but I'm still not like stoked for Craven. And I mean, this Morbius thing, like this is a, this is a problem. This is when, when all these artsy fartsy directors talk about how they hate Marvel and they hate what Marvel has done to the industry. You can't blame Marvel. Marvel's doing its own thing, but this is a reason, like, th this is a prime example of those artsy fartsy directors have a good point because all anybody is caring about with this movie is what shared universe does it fall yeah. under? And that's a big problem because that who nobody is going into this caring, like, oh man, I really hope that villain Matt Smith is playing is gonna, you know, like, nobody cares about that. Zero people. And it's, it's crazy to think that this movie is even going to exist because of just the lack of any kind of enthusiasm that seems to be put into it from any angle. So I just, I don't know. I want to know why this needed, why this story needed to be told because as even though I, I'm agreeing with those artsy fartsy directors on in this situation, what those directors don't understand is that pretty much every MCU movie that has come out has told a great story with great characters that made us care about them. Like they, they don't half-ass it. They cover all their bases. And, on, and the cherry on the Sunday is that it all connects. This just feels like just a cherry in an empty bowl. And that's not filling. I'm going to walk out of that still hungry and feeling like I didn't get my money's worth. I hope no, it no, doesn't no. try to connect. Like, why can't, like Venom, I haven't seen the second Venom still, sorry. But like Venom never tried to connect. Any, I mean, I know the post credit scene for Venom. I've seen that, obviously, and I've seen No Way Home. But like, I, if Venom doesn't try to connect to anything. It's like, this is Venom. This is where Venom lives. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one already, we see a Spider-Man picture. We see Vulture, and he mentions Venom. And it's like, okay, well, we're going down this weird path here. What, like, and my, you know, my weakness, my what I consider one of the weaknesses of the MC is when they shoehorn in the connective stuff and they're like, well, remember this guy from this? And you're like, oh, no, yeah. I don't like it. And I mean, like, think I, about it. I think the first Morbius trailer between the, I could be wrong, but the first Morbius trailer, if I remember right, was there like no connective tissue at all? And then the second trailer. Trip. Okay. He was in the oh. first one. Oh, maybe I thought it was the first one, but I don't know. It's been two years. Like, yeah. I can't even remember. Like that trailer, at least the second one that I remember is just like, here's a Spider-Man picture. Here's uh, Michael Keaton. Here's the Venom reference. And it's like, what are you really trying to sell? Like, so yeah, the, the first one had Vulture. At the, I think the first one had Vulture at the very, very end. And everybody thought that that was an end, like the post credit scene or the end mm. of the movie. And it looks like it's going to be like the middle of the movie or something like that. I don't know if it even, I think, to be fair though, we haven't seen the movie. And so they might be forced, like, there's no buzz for this movie. Like you said, it's kind of like, well, Morbius is coming out. Like, do people even know it's coming out April 1st? I don't even, because that's April Fool's Day. And of all the movies to drop on April Fool's Day, it's Morbius, the one that... Yeah, I've seen that's, 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 that's not a coinky dink. Yeah, like, I don't think people are excited for this movie. And I think that trailer that you're that you're referring to was kind of saying, hey, you want to be excited for this because, look, there's Spider-Man and there's Vulture and there's Venom. And, like, that's... I think that's what they're saying. And I don't know... I mean, maybe it is, but I don't know if that is going to be reflected in the final cut of the movie. I mean, this is, I'm just speculating because it, as a marketing standpoint, it kind of makes sense for me to be like, well, Spider-Man just made a lot of money and nobody cares about Morbius. And this has been delayed 700 times. Let's tell them this is in the Spider-Man universe. Which Spider-Man universe? The Spider-Man universe. I think I think it would make sense if they, if, if in this universe, I mean, Spider-Man is, is, is your hero, right? I mean, Morbius, they're turning into an anti-hero and Venom's an anti-hero and all blah, blah, blah. And Craven probably will be too. But eventually, like, they gotta be bad guys at some point. 
you need Spider-Man. So why not just pull up your pants and be like, Miles Morales is the Spider-Man in the Sony-verse. And just be like, this is its own thing. It's obviously in the multiverse. And next time you bring all the Spider-Man together, you're throwing Miles Morales with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. And, Tom, and you're like, there you go. And you don't worry about the other stuff. That's Because you have that. Or Spider-Gwen. Just do something. Like throw in a Spider-Man of your own. Throw that version in there and be like this is that version and then you can even have your own spider-man movie that's not associated with the mcu and then you make all the profit on it so i i, I mean i don't know how their rights are working on that anymore they probably are like no <laughs> no uh miles morales i don't know but that's where i stand like throw in them you have such so much potential and opportunities there to do something and uh and instead you're just confusing everybody and you're delaying a movie that nobody was craving for in the first place i none that of that's a thing like people don't ask for movies right like we get what we get and we go to see it but i think when it comes to comic book films though it's different it's like if the you know like the mcu has carte blanche now to do whatever they want because they have established themselves but so far sony's had mar uh venom like they've had venom and now they're gonna be like hey, and I, I applaud them for trying with morbius but i also feel like what they're doing with Morbius, Craven, Madam Web, and all this stuff, it feels like if they had a streaming service, all of this would play a lot better as straight <laughs> to streaming or series on the streaming service rather than throwing them in the theater. Because they're also, I mean, Jay Leto's, uh, I guess, a star, but he's not a box office draw, I wouldn't say. And Aaron Taylor Johnson's not a box office draw. It's not like they're getting, I mean, Tom Hardy's their biggest star, and it's not like, you know, I don't. I don't know if Craven or Morbius are big enough on their own to generate excitement without somebody like a bigger name portraying them. Because okay, okay, Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth was a nobody when he got Thor. He was Captain, uh, the original Captain Kirk, Captain uh, Tiberius Kirk. But then, like, you had Robert Downey Jr. already establishing how amazing Iron Man was at that point. Like, you know, like, you already had stuff like that. And Robert Downey Jr. wasn't a huge name, but he was Robert Downey Jr. He just wasn't the Robert Downey Jr. he is now. I don't know if you're there yet with Sony, and uh, I don't know if they'll get there. No. They, they are marketing this movie to just cater to the the junkies of shared stuff. Um, and... That's not going to spell a good fate for this movie. And I hate to sound like a negative jerk when I say that, because you're right, I have not seen this movie yet. I can't pass judgment on it because that wouldn't be fair. But like when you and I'm I have plans for the Morbius movie to be the next video essay that I talk about on my channel, um, because of how odd this movie is and its existence is. But I mean, you look at another movie with another character slash group of characters that nobody cared about coming out in a shared universe. And you look at the difference between Morbius's trailer and this trailer, Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy's first trailer didn't come out saying, look how connected to the Avengers this is. No, it came out and said, look at this crazy, cool, fun comic book movie we're gonna make and how big and colorful and insane and vibrant it's going to be. You're going to have a blast with this. And we did. And that was one of Marvel's best trailers. And so the fact that Morbius, or rather that Sony feels like they need to sell this movie on its connected tissue, it just, it tells me they got zero faith in this film. Um, so I can't have faith in something if the producers and the studio doesn't have faith in it either. I don't know. Well, I'm going to go see it March 31st and uh, I will report on what I found this one to be, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I hope it's good. I mean, I hope, why not? You know, I think sure. the, the one thing it has going for it is Moon Knight. And apparently Moon Knight's really good. Everyone's loving Moon Knight. And Moon Knight is also zany and in Marvel. And so, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> and, Blade, and Blade is coming. So you kind of have that supernatural element working for it. It should, I mean, it, this might have been better if they delayed it even further and like let Moonlight kind of run its course and then really piggyback on the success of Moon Knight. If people really seem to enjoy it and been like, hey, you like Moon Knight? Watch this thing. This is vampires. That's the same type of, you know, supernatural, supernatural. Let's do it. Uh, but it doesn't look like they I mean, obviously, one is Disney, one Sony, but at the same time, they're both Marvel characters that you could totally piggyback off of each other 
and use to some extent. Un un unofficially use, I should say.